It's Monday, July 7th, 2014. I'm Ariel Nunez, and from our CBS studios in New York City, welcome to The 404. Hey, what's up? Welcome to The 404 Show. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. Uh, I hope everyone had a fantastic holiday weekend. Did you? Yeah, I had a pretty good weekend. Yeah, yeah. it was great. That's awesome. Did Super you watch relaxing. fireworks? I did. I tried to watch the fireworks. I was up on my friend's roof in Brooklyn, but the fireworks were kind of in a weird place this year. I think they had to move them. Well, they're on the East River this year, right? Yeah, but they had to move them down, I think, for some reason. Oh, so, like south? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And anyway, I, I didn't get to see them because they were blocked by another building, but I got to see everyone else's sort of Rea- do-it-yourself Rea- fireworks. Oh, those are the best because yeah. those are the most dangerous. Yeah. And there's nothing like, I mean, regular fireworks, they're, they're okay, I guess. Yeah, there was like a mile in front of your face. Yeah, it's really fun when there's like a, a, a sense of danger, like, oh, someone could easily get hurt. Right. That makes things more fun. Did you see me. him? I did. I went, oh, I wasn't in the town. I was in, uh, I was like upstate New York. I, I saw the fireworks display at, um, at a place called Wyndham, which mm-hmm. is like where a ski mountain. But in the summer, there's no snow. Which I didn't know. Just a mountain. It's just a mountain. Okay. With like trail, with like hiking trails. And at the base of the mountain, they have a fireworks display. So we get there and we're like waiting for it to go off. And we're standing in this field and we think we know where the fireworks are going to be shooting from. But then all of a sudden, the guy's like, hey, you should get out of this field. And we're like, why? And he's like, because we shoot the fireworks off about 20 feet behind you. <laughs> and we turn around and there's like all the cannons and stuff. <laughs> and we're like, oh, that's weird. We didn't see that. So then we only went like 100 feet away and had to basically lay on the ground and stare up. Oh, that's so cool, though. You were probably Is really it? close to it. Yeah. Yeah, we're really close to it. I'm not about to hate on fireworks, but no. I'm about to hate on fireworks. Don't don't hate on those. Be- they're the inventions of my people. No, they're not. Yes, it's Chinese just, people invented fireworks. No, so everyone, was, you're welcome. It was <laughs> Gandalf. Gandalf invented <laughs> okay. it. Yeah. No, I, like I don't know, man. There just hasn't been zero innovation in in firework territory in like, like the last firework. 300 years. Yeah, because no, what else do you want with fireworks? I want them to like you know. Sp- I want like one to like sp- you know do a slimer hologram and have it like coast through the audience (laughs) you want like a sound element to it i don't know it's just everyone gets so excited for fireworks and i'm just like what whatever man i'm not a four-year-old i don't care you know i wonder what it was like for people driving across the bridge that were watching the fireworks happen because it looked like some of those shots were right over the brooklyn bridge yeah because everybody posted pictures of them afterward i think that's the best part about watching fireworks is seeing people in front of you take really shitty photos of the fireworks i took some good photos i saw one that you posted on instagram but for every one really solid like just good luck firework photo there's a million just really crappy like it's always focused and overexposed by some dude in the foreground you know that's on the roof with you but then like a blob of light in the back behind it (laughs) it's the best i love seeing crappy firework photos that one is good though you lucked out on this one well you want to know why you photoshopped it no because i took it with an slr Oh, okay. I cheated. I did the cheat. You're freaking cheater. I cheated. You give people shit all the time for doing that. No, I didn't. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you totally did. No, but you know what? You can't get a good firework shot with a phone with a camera phone. No, you can't because you got to focus and it doesn't work. It's that looks like a nebula. Yeah, it looks isn't cool. that cool? Yeah. Res- nice. Respect. Ariel respects that. He knows. Wait, you were just that. hating on fireworks, and you posted a picture of this beautiful because well, that's firework. a cool nebulous sort of you know space oddity firework. Yeah, you're one of you're one of those people. You see that how close I isn't watching the actual fireworks. You, you were watching get- them through a screen in front of your face. No, it was a viewfinder. Number two. <laughs> uh, see how freaking close I was. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> that's like nipping the tip right there. You're not supposed to be that close. Seeing photos of fireworks isn't doesn't give me the same effect as watching one explode in front. How of about you. flying a drone through oh, fireworks? This. this one was really this crazy. Cool. So here's this crazy asshole. He buys a drone and he flies it up through the fireworks. Yeah, this is okay. Cool. As badass as this does look, Whoa. I mean, come on, like you're seeing the the things go by him, which that's amazing. Yeah, how did yeah. this thing not explode? He's lucky. Here's why this guy's an idiot. Number one, you're just not supposed to do this because what if, what if like the drone, you know, got hit by a shell and then plummeted and like knocked the firework guy out? I know the odds of that are super, you know, rare. That's really cool though. It's really cool. 
Very cool. And maybe like it could be done professionally. But this guy seemed to like not care at all and just sort of flew his little helicopter into the firework, into like the war zone. Look how, look how high they are. That's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. I mean, they go two, three hundred feet in the air, right? Yeah, that's beautiful. It's amazing. And that's amazing. But like this, this he starts turning the camera within the sparkling. Yeah, you never get it's a three dimensional look at fireworks. Never. It's I think, always. On. I think he is kind of dumb, but at the same time, you know, that there's going to be regulations in the future for sure. people driving drones and stuff. Sure. So he's lucky he got this, man. He's this lucky as hell. He could have lost like the oh, GoPro so and the cool. thing. But but it really is amazing. What? Like I'll be the looks, first to oh admit, it's God. amazing. It looks like it's in 3D too. Right. It's like almost like Matrix bullet time fireworks, if wow, you will. He needs amazing. to sell this footage. Um, yeah, what's really cool is in the beginning of the video when he starts it off in front of him. You know, it's like yeah. on a ledge. I think he's actually holding it in his hand. Right, and, just and then it, it just takes off from his hand all the way up 300 feet in the sky. It was so cool. Like, drones are everywhere. I was at a hockey practice last week, and they were cutting the ice in between our practice. And then all of a sudden, this one of the Zamboni operators had his drone come out and, like, fly <laughs> over the ice <laughs> at two feet off the ice. And it yeah. was just cool. That's cool. It's rad. I'm I mean, on one, man. Yeah, that's awesome. But you're really trusting the guy that is driving the drone, right? I mean, if he's flying that right in your face, apparently, you better have good control over that. Oh, that one looked like it exploded right in front of the lens of it. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. They, I can't believe the quality of these videos, too. Well, just, is that just dude, a GoPro? The Go yeah, the GoPro is amazing quality. Oh, 1080. 1080p, so baby. Cool. Live in the now. Yeah, technology, man. It's pretty <laughs> badass. He, it did look like he 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 kept a safe distance from the actual points of explosion you know and it's just he's just sort of getting like wow that's amazing that's an amazing shower he, he gets like you know the the trailing mm -hmm. you know chandelier sort of effect but still super dangerous dude yeah all right what are I, you doing? I was reading about this and someone commented um on the article that while they were watching fireworks, oh, somebody no, else it in reverse. That's pretty rad. Somebody else was also oh, driving a few yeah. drones around in the fireworks, and he said you could see the little red dots blinking on the GoPros. It was just annoying the hell out of everybody. But I guess if you want to get this shot, you gotta crack a few eggs. What's kind of funny is uh, it's like where none of this was around last year. Like nobody, I'm sure someone did it, oh, so but cool. all of a sudden. In 365 days' time, yeah. everyone and their mother has a drone with a GoPro yeah. attached. I think they're just a little more accessible now. For sure. You're totally they're, right. They're a lot cheaper. How yeah. much are those? You can get a cheap one for like less than 400 bucks. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not as good as something like this, but you can get cheap ones. I, th I, I feel like if you're spending 400 bucks, you're going to get a good one. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, the guy at the hockey ring said his was like... 68 bucks wow <laughs> i mean it wasn't anything like amazing but it had like leds on it and it was it wasn't like a quadcopter probably like this oh, thing need one man amazing right yeah so uh there you there you have it That's some pretty interesting awesome. stuff so so what did you what did you do like for the weekend did you have like a uh had a picnic went yeah. to prospect park rode my bike around a bunch sweated a lot oh yeah you sweat a lot yeah yeah, Did you? Definitely. That's on the nice. bike is crazy. I didn't really sweat that much because I was upstate New York and at night it was like 50 degrees. Oh, and you were in a cave too, right? Well, yeah. So I spent some time. I think, in, um, wait, I think Steve Guttenberg, who was here on Friday, actually made a joke in the beginning of the episode that you were in a cave. But you were actually in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I That's was true. actually in a cave. I was at How Caverns, yeah. which is uh, in upstate New York. Um, and it's... Uh, this amazing, uh, you know, sort of underground cave, one of the largest ones in America, I'm told. Ooh. And it was awesome. discovered about 200 years ago by some swindler, right? So this guy discovers the cave uh -huh. and he keeps going down there by himself because it's like 45 degrees underground uh -huh. and it's 200 feet down. And it was all created by, you know, water slowly but surely you know, a quarter of a million years ago. Right. And it's just the water does this. And over time, it, it sort of like carves out this amazing cave. Uh. And so this guy, so they, sh they had this like animatronic dude in the beginning explaining, explaining it, which <laughs> was super creepy. But um, he basically goes on to say like, yeah, it, uh, you know, it was discovered by this guy. He kept going down there and then he goes to the landowner who didn't know the cave was there. And he's like, hey, you don't need this land. Let me buy it to you. Buy it from you. Yeah. Cheap. 
And he's like, all right, $100 later, he owns the land that the cavern's on. What? What a swindler, right? Easy, yeah. The American dream right there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing place. I was there like 20 years ago. It is shocking so what water too. can do. Yeah. Like, what water can do is crazy. I mean, that's how the Grand Canyon got here. And uh, this place is no different. It's it stalactites, stalagmites, the whole thing. It's pretty rad. Mm -hmm. You go under, and it's like a two-hour tour, and then you go, you even go on like a boat tour. Yeah, I saw that in a canoe or something. That's yeah, cool. it's kind of amazing. And there's this one, uh, and the like, the finale of it. Yep. What? All right, I'm gonna go, but don't ruin anything for me. What's well, not, dude? I mean, like, it's just rocks and shit. <laughs> yeah, like, you're not okay. gonna be. They're gonna be like, what? There's giraffes down here. <laughs> um, I forget what they call it, but there's this like super narrow walkway, which I'm pretty sure like a hefty dude could not make it through. There's a weight limit. <laughs> like there's, it's not a weight limit, but there's definitely a girth limit. <laughs> and no, and, and like I, like I got through it. No, you know, I, there were some parts where I had to like contortion my body, you know, yeah, contort my body a little bit and do a little bit of limbo. But someone who maybe weighs like. 300 probably mm -hmm. couldn't get through there so mm. i wondered and then me and my friend were like i wonder if they like sort of eye everyone up and down before the finale and they're yeah. like sir i think you might be more comfortable taking this exit out <laughs> you may want to rub some pisco on yourself <laughs> you before squeezing it because it's intense man and it goes up for my and like you just there's so many uh spots in the cavern where it's just like nothingness yeah. like you look down and there's just nothingness and they light the cave in a very dramatic way so that you know everything is just scary kind of looking and mm -hmm. it's pretty rad it's in the middle of nowhere if you're ever in upstate new york around the catskills yeah. i highly recommend this really uh, reminds me of out. goonies Oh, totally. It it's probably like, it's feel like, like you're yeah. in Goonies. Inspiration you're for Goonies was was Hal Cavern. Yeah, I see how there's like different colors. Yeah, do do they add that or is yeah. that? So a lot of that lighting? is like the gels. Um, oh, okay. There's a there's certain rooms that have naturally uh, crazy colors, like this room. Mm -hmm. um, I forget what they call it. I think they call it the bronze room. And the amazing thing about this room is it's just white light. And what they do is they, you know, it shows off the different sort of bronzes and stuff. Right. What's also really cool is there's like moss growing everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so that adds this awesome like green hue to everything. And there's parts of the water. I mean, you wouldn't want to drink this water, but it looks good enough to drink. Oh, it's clear, yeah. It's crystal clear, and and the the sound is amazing. And they were, you know, the tour guides are super knowledgeable, and they were saying after uh, a big rainstorm, maybe when it rains like really hard for like a day, uh -huh. you, the place closes because it floods. Oh, right. Think about it; it's 200 feet below the ground, mm -hmm. and you know they show, they sort of show like lines where water can go up to. So cool. It's, it's one like the of the most cave. peaceful places you can ever visit mm -hmm. and then the craziest part so the end of the boat tour there's like this waterfall and it's guarded by chains and after the waterfall they're like yeah that goes about a thousand feet and you're like what think about what a thousand feet is yeah. and think about like and she's like yeah that's where all the bats live oh my god and we're like cool let's not go there yeah yeah leave them alone um but it's amazing and it's so cold it's like 45 degrees down there uh -huh. And I just want hot. I just want to live there. Yeah. They should build a hotel down there. That they, would be rad. They should do something for Halloween in here. I, they Turn the whole do. thing into a haunted house. They probably It'd be amazing. Do. Yeah. Have like a Bigfoot jumping out at you yeah. in random places. There's a lot of places that they don't want you touching either because if when 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 the oils in our skin interact with some of the minerals on the rocks, they yeah. stop growing. Because all the rocks are like kind of growing mm -hmm. in their own weird, you know, geological ways. And uh, yeah, there's one, um, what do they call it? They call it like the China column. Mm -hmm. Here it is, this thing. I forget what exactly like the, the reason it's called that. But aside from just looking like a big old bone, uh -huh. it's like a half a million year old uh, wow. stalagmite. Or what's the ones on the bottom? I should know this. Mite, yeah, mite. That's yeah, man, pretty sick. I, I'm looking at a photo on my computer here of how you get underneath like 150 feet deep or something you yeah. take an elevator, elevator from a house that they built on top of the caverns yeah. that is like the bat cave it is oh totally it totally is and so now you know like how bruce wayne had a deal with the contract right it was probably a harrowing experience <laughs> yeah it was freezing in the bat cave. yeah i'm sure the bat cave is definitely freezing <laughs> there's one thing i learned is that the bat cave is definitely freezing yeah awesome i'll have yeah. to go check that out super cool 
also while I'm up there, and it was be- it was just beautiful. I got away with a couple couples, and we uh, we we hung out in this like cabin uh-huh. in upstate New York. I played some golf. It's very enjoyable. Man, you play yeah. golf? Nah, I don't play too much golf. I've never tried it before. Yeah, you're the guy I want to play with. I want I want to play it though. I've I've been to the driving ranges before. Okay. I've gone putting before. I played mini golf when I was young. Yeah. But I've never actually gone out on a cart. I think I'd like it. I think you'd like it too. Maybe especially you should go. I just kind of enjoy like playing with people who've never played before. Are you good? I'm pretty I'm I'm not I'm better than average. Okay. All right. Um it's kind of hilarious. It's yeah. not your fault. Like golf yeah. is in- incredibly hard. <laughs> right, right. But I played with someone who'd never even held a club clearly. Mm-hmm. Like if we found that out way quick. Mm-hmm. So you're constantly chasing the ball around the field. Oh, he was a mess. Like I just like give him a club and the ball and I'd be like, okay, I'll see you at the green. Yeah. <laughs> he He's like holding like, it by the bottom. <laughs> it's just <laughs> he would de- okay, here's a dude who would have been better off throwing the ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not joking. It's fine. Golf is super hard. Anyway, uh, we we played this game when we got back to the cabin called Joust. Uh-huh. Now, it's not Joust like you remember from the arcades. It is a game. It's a mini game within a game called Sports Friends. Yeah. I think and it was made by this, uh, this guy. Um, what the hell is his name? I feel bad that I don't know his name. It was a Kickstarter campaign. Right? It was a Kickstarter uh, campaign. Uh, I'll look up the guy's name after I play this video. Uh, he's an independent developer, and he made this. It's, it's in a game called Sports Friends. And oh, Johan Sebastian. No, that's <laughs> the music <laughs> oh, okay. that they played during Oh, it's it. Bach? Yeah. I was like, wow, he's named after <laughs> Johan Sebastian Bach. <laughs> That's funny. I'll look up the guy's name. He's a really good dude. I've, I think I've actually met him before. Anyway, okay. this game Joust uses move controllers. <laughs> if you switch to my screen, there's a dude holding a move controller. Um, so it's just a move controller. You can have up to eight players, and it only works on PS4 or PC. And you attach all of the move controllers to a computer through uh-huh. Bluetooth. And the game plays music, and everyone has to hold this thing, and it's all like motion sensing and vibration sensing. Right. So the object of the game is to hold your move controller delicately while you whack it out of the other people's hands. <laughs> so you're basically just right. like trying to like knock over people's you know candles, if you will. Mm-hmm. And everything's color coded so you know when you're out and it vibrates when, you're, when you are getting a little too you know crazy. And there's different like, um, here I'll start playing it and there's different like modes right like see these guys they're trying to like keep their hands straight oh, while knock right. it out of other people's hands mm-hmm. you don't um, have to knock the thing out you just kind of jostle them and you can jostle them you can like uh, you can swing at them you can push them there's really uh-huh. no rules as to uh, but but your your move controller will go red when you're out oh, which is pretty okay. great and then how does the music factor so the into? music the speed of the music dictates how fast you can move. So when it's playing normally, you can move slowly. But then the music will speed up and you have a little more leeway as to how much movement you can have. Oh, okay. Right? So these guys are just playing it in the middle of the street. It's a great game to play when you've had a few. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. And um, you don't have stuff around you you can break. They're right. doing it all outside. Exactly. So I wouldn't recommend Playing doing it. Playing it outside. See, and then he went red where. and he's out. Yeah, yeah. So it's amazing. And then there's a mode where it says freeze. And then you are stuck where you're standing, and if you move at all, you're out. Uh-huh. And what people do is they sort of like try and do psych outs, where they'll make someone else laugh. And if you get someone to laugh, it's enough to get you out. Those controllers are pretty sensitive. Yeah, they're super sensitive. But see, red, it's amazing. And there's no rules, which is great. So you can like throw things at people if you <laughs> really want to get crazy. Right. You make up your own sort of thing. John Sebastian Baust, uh, Joust, sorry, is the name of that game. That's and, pretty um, awesome. Yeah, it's what's cool is that nobody in the in that video is actually looking at a television screen. Like right. you don't really need that necessarily. All you, yeah, all you need is a, um, a computer and speakers. It's a computer and yeah, and that and that's really it. It's it's just kind of brilliant. Um, and I'm looking up the, the the name of the developer real quick because mm-hmm. he definitely deserves some credit. Um, you know, it's just it's just this really cool kind of game that you don't expect much from in the beginning but Uh when you start getting into it it's just a blast the guy's name is douglas wilson who who created it it's kind of nice to see people getting together to play video games now it's not it's not a video not really a video game but just any kind of game you're getting together i mean feel like people used to do that before multi online multiplayer came out and now not so much so it's kind of cool it's just so yeah this is something really cool and you know it like mixes the analog with the digital in a real good way because you know like you have your own controller and it, it's your own color mm-hmm. and when it's over it's just like green player wins right and it's just 
It's funny. You just hook up like a Bluetooth speaker to your computer and you mm-hmm. got like an arena. I feel like if you were really tall, you'd have an advantage in the no. game because you could just do that thing no. you play with kids where you just hold yourself still. Nope. And you can't jump and grab. Nope, oh, because your you whole body. You when get your pushed. body gets pushed. It's so you kind of violent. Have, you kind of have to like train your hand to be a steady cam. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it's so much fun. If you have the means, the the hardest thing about it is getting a buttload of move controllers. They're right, that cheap. Right. We had six, but it works with up to eight. I think you can buy them for like maybe 25 bucks each. I read that you can use uh, PlayStation controllers, just regular controllers. Yeah, too, you can it. use that too. Uh, but, but that's way more fun because you yeah. don't get the lights. And you also don't, like the move controllers can kind of take a beating like if they knock out of your hand. Yeah. You don't want a regular PS4 controller to just like hit the ground pretty right. hard. That's not good. Right, right. Yeah. So. so you guys break anything in the house over the weekend playing oh, this? Uh, just hearts. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to hear something funny? What? This is a funny story. I, ha- I was not going to tell this, but I had to. I had to. I had to do it. The lady we rented this place from was like very crunchy. Airbnb. No, we're just regular renting. Like I forget what the site was called. Stacy took care of the whole thing. Okay. Crunchy, like, uh, Hippie, hippie-ish style. Hippie, okay. very, right? Natural. And, like, the whole time she's like, this is a greenhouse. Like, you know, it's really, it really wasn't a greenhouse. Like, a greenhouse is self-sufficient, right? Like, a greenhouse, like, filters, you know, the bath water and then uses it to, like, water the plants and does stuff like that. She was just, like, into that ideology. She was, like, kind of, like, hippy-dippy, like, artist, you know? Like, maybe, maybe she's retired and she's, like, picking up painting. Okay. We saw, like, really weird paintings spread across... What do you mean? The house. Well, there's one painting. Where she's kind of like butt naked on a couch. And it's definitely her. She painted she, herself? She painted herself. So she like, must have taken a photo of herself and then <laughs> painted herself <laughs> butt naked. So we're like, all right, fine. Maybe you don't like have that out for people who are renting the place. What was she doing on the couch? She's, she's just sitting just like, there, lounging? Sitting there with her arms out. Uh-huh. Left nothing to the imagination. How old is she? She's probably like in her 40s. Okay. <laughs> You're just sizing that up. So far up. not seeing a problem here. Right. Okay. Well, here, here's where it gets a little weird. So then we go into our bedroom. We open up the door and we're like, oh, this is a nice little spot. And then I get to the sink. And I look up at the sink and I look up and there's a mirror. To the right of the mirror is a real photograph. Upon further inspection, the photograph is of her through like a, a hallway of doors. And it's like a selfie, but she took a selfie of herself. And then you look really close and you're like, oh man, she's butt naked. So she was like really into like this like exhibitionist right. sort of, you know. Maybe she's a nudist. I, it was something like there was definitely a weird vibe uh-huh. throughout. But it was artistic, right? It wasn't pornographic or anything It was not like pornographic. So you stole just, the photo. No, it was just very artistic. Okay. So like, you know, the, the eight, the, what was it? Eight of us. We started like seeing her everywhere in the house. Like, we just <laughs> would discover another photo. And then things took a turn for like the creepiness. Like we found a photo of like nothing but dolls looking at the camera. What? Yeah. And then like a cross above it. Like creepy stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Stuff that like maybe we've seen too many horror movies and we're just like associating that with it. Weird. Yeah. Uh, then we found like a really strange Alice in Wonderland-esque tea party in the backyard. But it was like overgrown, uh-huh. you know, so it was like very weedy and decayed and paint chipped everywhere. Oh, like yeah, it was a lot of stuff like that. And then we found something that I can never unsee. And the description is odd. I took a, I did take a photo, but I, didn't, I don't have it with me just because I don't want to like tip anyone off. And I don't want to, if she's, if, you know what I mean? Like I don't, so it was what I can only describe as a birdhouse, but it was made out of what appeared to be human hair. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. How do you even do that? I, I don't know. Now, now it gets weirder. So that, was a thing like on a shelf in a room, okay? (laughs) Coming out of the birdhouse was like a steel looking beetle. What? Very creepy, yeah, I know, like you can't make this up. That's so weird, okay. So weird. A beetle coming out of a birdhouse made of hair? A beetle bigger than the birdhouse itself. 
What? And the roof of the, the birdhouse was like hairy. It looked like gray pubes. Uh, it was curly? It was a little curly. You could see the individual strands of hair. Yeah, it was hair. It How was, did you put that together? I mean, you, I'm not even mad at that. That's just talented. Yeah, I'm, I we were mad at it because it gave us nightmares. <laughs> yeah, we how do you like, fall asleep in the house lovely house that. of death? Right, and then we found like Webster's dictionary in the freezer. What? Yeah, no. Yep. It was inside the fr the freezer. Did you in open it up to see if there was a compartment yeah, inside? Yeah, it wasn't like a fake book. No, well, no Real nothing book. carved inside. Nope. What? Real fruit. That's where that goes. <laughs> Just tidying up. Dude, like the place was so strange. What? It was nice, but strange. And yeah. she knew that people were obviously staying over. I'm I mean, sure she had rented it out to other people before. Definitely. There's reviews of this. She place. wants people to see this stuff. Here's some more stuff. Clothes in all the closets. Okay, so she, what do you mean? But like other people's clothes like when you rent a place like maybe you lock those closets uh -huh. but every closet in every room had like clothes and slip and just like it just looked like it was being currently lived in uh -huh. and we just snuck in for three nights oh, that's creepy okay yeah is, is she like a single woman do you we know, don't know or? the backstory very There's nice no photos woman. of her family or all anything? of the interactions we had with her very nice woman and no are you gonna write that in the review you probably should to well, warn wrote, other people we wrote like a top 10 creepy things in the guest book yeah but like we didn't do it at the end of the signatures we like found a blank space in oh, the smart. middle yeah so yeah. that they wouldn't think like oh it was clearly the last people who rented right. it oh. yeah yeah Ugh, I don't yeah like that. it's yeah it was i'm trying to think any like mason jars filled with weird liquids or anything? There were like a that? bunch of um there were a bunch you didn't of look in the closets, did you? No, we did. Well, because the <laughs> closets were open. There was one after this trip was just you snooping through her stuff. She um there was I had we wrote that there was an overwhelming sense that we were being watched. No, there wasn't. There was because everything had like a label everywhere. And it was like, don't drink in this room. I don't care if you're being careful. Like stuff like that. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, so it was weird. weird. It was weird. Um there was yeah, there was just strange It was a big house. Though, so right? It was a three-story house. Wow. But it was it was small because it was like sort of you know, in like a barn style. So it wasn't like yeah, weird, but like there were never there was never time where like what was that? It was just always you know, people who may have died here. Yeah, no big deal. It was just it was just creepy and like oh, you know, like I'm sorry. Maybe just living the lives we live for. You know, we're being spoiled by like things like cell phone service. But when you're in a place where there's no service, it gets a little creepy. Oh, and you didn't mention that. Yeah, there's no cell phone service oh, there. Mountains are creepy. The mountains and like you just and it rained one night hard. And when that thunder happens, like yeah. it cracks and echoes against everything, and it sounds like the gods themselves <laughs> are like, you know, now crushing you mountains. Me. It's intense. Man. Wow, wow, that's yeah. awesome. But it was it was cool, like. But it was strange. Yeah, you pay extra for that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, you pay like, and yet I hate seeing bugs that appear to be so big that you can like see them breathing. Do you know what I there mean? There were bugs in the house. There were no, there were there were like gnats and stuff in the house, which is unavoidable because because right. you're like in the middle of nowhere. But like when I got there, I saw bugs that were probably living there before the next renters were coming in. Yeah, they came first. And like, you know when you see a bug and you're like, is that a bat or a bug? Yeah. And it's just so big that the wings are very vivid and detailed and like almost veiny. You know what I mean? And like you can almost like maybe it's just my and I <laughs> your face is amazing right now. And I hate <laughs> bugs so much, right? Yeah, oh, like, I hate I, bugs. Yeah, I hate bugs. Clearly. And like this bug was like <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> like nodded his head at you. <laughs> it was like top of right. the morning, you know. Like, yeah. I was like oh, let's get that away. So I had to like poke at it with a broomstick, uh. and then just like flapped away. Like it was like, oh, I'll like, be back. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, oh, it was bad. Not was bad. to mention the fake bugs too that were coming out of the bird. Right, and that cage just added insult hair. to injury right there. I don't like people that that like bugs that fetishize bugs like that. Yeah, to have them as decorations in your house is not. That's so creepy. And we took Marty. Marty had a great time up there. Yeah. So we we were like, look, if there's like a murderer or oh, like right, evil yeah. 
Dogs can see ghosts. Dogs everyone will, yeah, do, everyone knows that dogs That's an are the first. And then there were cows right next to us because there was like a, uh, you know, a grazing area. It was fenced in. So every, like the cows were, you know, they knew people were there. So we were kind of messing with the cows a little bit. Nothing bad. Mm -hmm. And they owned, they were owned by a farmer, obviously. But then one day, like we looked outside, I woke up and I was like, I'm pretty sure that cow got out. And it was in our like lawn. <laughs> you're just like grazing <laughs> you know it wasn't like a running away yeah and then we looked and we found there was like a low point in the fence and the cow oh, had right. gotten out cow jumped over the fence <laughs> it didn't jump it just <laughs> raised its feet yeah. like higher than it normally would <laughs> right. it wasn't an obstacle right it was just like this is easy wow and it got out and it just started like going near the car and you're like man a cow's like a ton yeah right? what if cow? it just climbed like, on top what if of it the car? just like even bumped up against it could right. damage a car and i'm just like we're trying to like shoo it away yeah, it's, yeah, it's what kinda do you hilarious. Do? Push that thing over. We were just like trying to do our best moo. Yeah. You know? And it worked a little bit. It did? Yeah. And your it, best moo. Well, so so cows don't go moo. They don't just like that's like kindergarten shit. Right, right. They don't go like moo. They do like moo <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Like so that, so we did that and it worked. And the cow's like, that's my the cow's like, I know that voice. Yeah, <laughs> I've met him before. <laughs> you know, Earl? Like so he and then he went away. Oh man. And then he like went to the forest out of his grazing, you know, fenced in area. Yeah. And I assume a cow lost <laughs> a, a farmer lost a cow in the process. These are the stories you have when you don't have internet or cell phone. This is it. Like we we took yeah, we were like grilling marshmallow uh, grilling, you know, uh, roasting the marshmallows and whatnot yeah. playing, and playing joust that's amazing it's kind of a, i yeah, didn't realize kind of how fun. good of a story maybe it probably was yeah man. yeah were there creaky floorboards and everything too no but the the wind uh, was such that it kind of like echoed through the yeah, house wow. in a strange way and it was really weird so marty is very uh, explorative right he loves like the second he gets to a place he's like i'm gone like you'll catch me in 20 minutes i'm, I'm gonna sniff every corner of this place uh -huh. so he goes upstairs and he and the door slammed clothes when he went upstairs mm -mm. and he's by himself mm -mm. and like the eight of us are on the first floor and like marty's barking like crazy mm -mm. and we it was a big like nope moment. yeah it was almost like we all ran you know and uh we get up and just the door closed from the wind and right it was fine but it was still like oh my god what demon is eating my dog oh, right now? god yeah. that sounds like every single horror movie like i watched the frighteners over the weekend yeah. it sounds exactly like that it like definitely... things coming out of the wall oh yeah paint dripping just like a lot of like girls with wet hair yeah yeah you know yeah. and like black faces if i were in that house i wouldn't look at any mirrors we did those mirrors are scary and all, long hallways too imagine. yeah oh, it I was hate hallways. a lot of like old furnaces too like furnaces that could easily come alive and yeah. and destroy the lives of anyone no, i'm good you don't believe in ghosts though right no did you have to repeat that to oh no I, I i was never like <laughs> wow this house might kill us right because, you know, but it's fun to joke right. and it's fun to like mess with people who are a little sensitive about Did it. Did you scare anybody? Oh, yeah. Prank city. I just, I, we're just doing like, a, and even in the cave, like the cave's not the, the, the nicest place you'd want to be alone. Right. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, man. I got sounds a, awesome. I got a few voices that I reserve for those moments that <sighs> just a little like, yeah. you know, like that sort of stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. Halloween in July. It sounds like you had a good weekend. That was my weekend, man. Oh, man. It's so creepy. Yeah. Yeah, the goosebumps now. Yeah, you, she should really just advertise it as a place to give you the spoops. Like, I that think could be so. a good uh, thing to get people yeah, to stay cause, there. Because the way she advertises it is more like come country living. You know? Right, yeah. right. You don't. Yeah, it's more like death. Come scare the shit out of your friends. <laughs> death. Yeah. yeah, I'm into it. Whew, good story, man. All right, cool. Glad I could do that. Oh, crazy. Sick. Yeah. Wonder All right. Do we even have time for any stories now? Yeah, we could do like one or two. Let's do it. All right. Which one do you want to talk about? Um, I want to talk about the uh, the ban on phones. Yeah, so this happened over the weekend, and some people are pissed off, but I don't really mind myself. You may get upset at this. I want to hear what you think. The TSA over the weekend, they announced some new security measures, specifically with electronic devices. Mm -hmm. So a couple months ago, they announced that you can now use your devices when you take off and land. So they eased up a little bit on that. I think that's the FAA, though, um, right. who made that rule. Yeah. But the TSA, they announced over the weekend that um, cell phones and laptops must be charged and be able to turn on when you there when you go to get inspected by security so when you go through that good. line i i thought so too right yeah. but apparently this is news um powerless devices uh devices that don't have any more battery juice they won't be permitted on board because apparently galaxy phones 
and iPhones in particular are are of concern because bomb makers of Al Qaeda and a couple other factions have been using these specific devices to to hide bombs. That's Boom, boom devices. <laughs> boom, 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 boom <laughs> devices is what the, the TSA uses. I don't like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like. But who is bringing had, a device that isn't po- uh, powered up on board anyway? Maybe, right? maybe somebody, but you know, look, if you are and it doesn't power up, like, I guess that kind of is suspicious. Yeah, that right? is suspicious. Like, like why, why would you, you have bring a that dead on? phone with you? Yeah, if anything, I always make sure to have not only my stuff charged up, but also like an external charger right. or something. Right. Like, like, who gets on a plane and is like, oh, I forgot to charge everything? Yeah. Never happens. I would be, I would be a little suspicious. I've had someone say, I've, look, I've brought laptops that were off, which yeah. is understandable. But I've, I've been asked to turn it on. You have? Yeah. Because I was going to say, that's never happened to me before. They said it would just be, you know, random screenings and stuff yeah. where they'll ask you to turn it on. But that's never happened to me. I would just put my laptop and my phone in there. Right. And it just goes through straight. They no, never ask me to turn it on. Yeah. I've, I mean, my phone's always been on. My, I, my laptop is usually off, and I've had it happen once. Now, I think we're also forgetting, like, an important detail. What happens when they figure out how to put a bomb inside a working phone? Yeah. <laughs> then what? Which is basically after this article came out. Priority number one. Right. Yeah. Like that's the next version of bomb phone. Yeah. It's like, okay, all we need now is a working screen. Right. Like the screen could just have like a, like, why can't someone just, I don't want to say this, but why can't someone just like gut a laptop, Mm. put in a Raspberry Pi Mm -mm. and fill the rest with C4? Yeah. Yeah. Like what the hell? It doesn't even have to be an electronic device. It could be something else. Yeah. But that would show up on the x-ray. What? The bomb inside? Like I'm right and I'm wrong. Like somebody could make oh, a fake yeah. dummy laptop. Right. But the second you send that through, you would see C four like sticks. Yeah. yeah. You'd be like, hmm, you know. Right. right. Hopefully that, they're paying attention that, that much Ram to see or that. dynamite. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing. Didn't know they made hard drives okay in that shape laugh? anymore. <laughs> Is this okay to laugh? At? Yeah. I don't even know. But I guess it makes sense. <laughs> don't go on a plane with a dead cell phone. That's yeah. weird. That's weird. I mean, yeah. I know planes have outlets now, and it's not an issue. <laughs> But you're like, why do you have four candles tied up inside your laptop? Just go, just go ahead, go to the game. I have a lot of friends that were like, are really mad over this, and I didn't understand that because yeah. this makes more sense than the whole uh, liquids thing, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. What yeah. were they saying, your friends? Um, just like, oh, you don't think that people have phones that aren't charged? This makes no sense. We're just gonna back up, you know, back up the security gate and right. blah blah blah. It's like, I think they just want something to complain about, to be yeah. honest. You know, it is probably going to back up the security gate a little more. I mean, though. I don't think so, man. You don't think so? I mean, yeah, just I make sure your phone is ready. You yeah, know, yeah. like All you got to do is take two seconds, right? Yeah, I've had yeah. I've had them make me turn on my iPad before. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't take that long. No, you know, the, the you're you're right, Ariel. I don't think it'll back up yeah. the line. What I do think will continue to back up the line is the seemingly endless amount of dummies yeah that, exactly that show up at the airport yeah. completely unprepared yeah yeah like yeah. where's your boarding pass oh i don't know what do i need that for right mm-hmm. it's amazing to me how many times i'm just like slapping my forehead while in queue for the for the checkpoint yeah and people are just like fumbling like they literally have 20 minutes mm-hmm. in queue zigzagging and right. someone shouting the whole time yeah. telling you what to do yeah, and people like the still guy aren't ready like where have your license have your yeah. pass and this guy's right. like oh I left it in my car. Yeah. yeah, what pisses me off is always that one guy who has to who refuses to get scanned in right. that body scanner right. and he has to have a separate person and he takes up, you know, the attention of one of those security sure. agents who could otherwise be helping people through right. to scan him physically. And he doesn't have anything to hide, otherwise he wouldn't concede to that. He doesn't have anything to hide. He's just doing it out of principle right. because he yeah. refuses to be Scan naked, right, like he's throwing the brick through the man's office. Yeah, and that frustrates me so much. It's like, man, you're holding up the rest of the line, right. yeah. and we all agree on this. Just do it, you right. know? Oh, like it's no one will disagree with. that the TSA is like mostly useless, but like we just have to do it. Yeah. We just have to do it right now. Right. Right. So just power up your devices. That's all. I mean, make sure everything is charged before you leave, or it, bring the charger with you. Yeah. Yeah. God. And leave. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We're normally the first to complain about stuff like this. We but are. Which is leading me to to want to pursue doing that TSA certified thing. What do you mean? 
You know you can pay money. Oh yeah. You can do this like TSA certified check thing or whatever it's called. You know when you get to the line, it's like TSA certified to the left. All you other idiots to the right. Oh, I haven't mm-hmm. even seen that line. Yeah, you can bypass all that shit. Like a fast pass? Yeah, there's like an kind easy of, pass. Yeah. It's what? like a subscription thing, right? Yeah, or yeah, Mark and Mark and Sally are both members of it. They, it's like an interview. They like interview. They call you up and they're like, "Are you evil?" And you're like, "No." And this like, is Congratulations. before you get to the airport. Yeah, this is like you. Is it's like home? an easy pass. For the yeah, and they you, have, they you get like a background check, I'm sure. Uh huh. And it costs a hundred bucks or something. They make similar. sure you're not a terrorist. Yeah, and that you haven't been radicalized in the last you know couple of years. Right. And you just go you go through. Holy shit! And, and it's that, always way shorter than their regular line. It's like empty. It's always mm-hmm. empty. Why you are skip right through the you security? Skip right through. Christine How? has it because she travels a lot for work, so the work pays for it, and she really? just goes right through. Yeah. yeah, she leaves her the house like forty five minutes before her flight's oh about to take God. off. And, and they still right there. scan your stuff, right? And you still have to put your your things. Through yeah, the yeah, but it's belt. a separate line, so yeah. you just zip it's like right through. It's like your own personal X ray machine, and you have to renew it every year. How much is it? I don't know. Gotta I look it up. Know. Yeah, I gotta look it up. Guys, yeah, Mark, I'm gonna do it before CES. It depends on how much you travel, but if it's under a hundred bucks, I would totally do it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Wow, that's genius. I had no if idea. We, if they we go really to advertise that. Yeah. yeah, it's worth it. Where does that money go, though? I don't know, like more scanners yeah. or something? <laughs> that's, wow, that's awesome. Pretty cool. All right. Pretty cool. Um, all right, we're running kind of late. Is that where we're going to end it? Yeah, let's end it there. We'll leave the rest of the stories for tomorrow because okay. some of them are pretty good. And plus, I want to talk, I want to read an email from... We have an 81-year-old listener. Yeah, yeah, I read that. This one's cool. I love this guy. All right. So we read it now? or Yeah, yeah. yeah let's do it, it now. Let's do it now. Hey, Jeff, Justin. He spelled your name J-U-S-T-A-N. That's it's fine. Cool. It's okay. I spelled Ariel's name like the typeface. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. It's fine. I watch your podcast every day. You're the man, Tony. You guys are really down to earth. I am 81 years old, and I love the new technology available now. Mm-hmm. I have an iPad, an iPad mini, a Nexus 7, a Galaxy Tab 3 8.0. A Galaxy Tab Pro 12 IN? What is that? 12 inch. Oh, okay. Two Kindle Fire HDXs. What do you have two uh, for? <laughs> yeah, you got a problem, Tony. Tony, I think we're. Uh, Send me that iPad. I think, we're, I think we're gaining a lot of debt here. No. Um, he's got a Lenovo desktop computer, mm-hmm. a Sony Vio laptop, two regular Kindles. And I know how to use them all, so all us old geezers are not dinosaurs. Yeah. Keep up the good work, and Jeff, go easy on Justin. Yeah. Did I go hard on you? Go easy on me. My hard on you? I don't know what he's talking about. Thank Tony you, from, Tony. from LBC. Dude, that's amazing. Tony, you're the man. Tell all your friends about the show. I want a solid senior citizen lineup. I love that he's from Long Beach, too. That's neighbors to Huntington, where I'm from. So give Orange County a hug for me, Tony. Miss I love you, place. Tony. You're the man. Thank you for uh, writing in. Very cool stuff. We'll get to all these undiscussed uh, stories tomorrow. Shoot us an email, the 404 at CNET.com. You can reach us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. And we're back here with a brand new show tomorrow. Until then, I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. This has been the 404 Show, high-tech, low-brow. Have an awesome Monday. We'll see you soon.